Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brad Matheny, and today we're going to take a look at the NQ and the ES uh, with my Fibonacci modeling system on a daily basis. Now, what I want to point out is this little rotation we've seen here. Let me spread this out and spread this out. This little rotation we've seen here over the past three weeks in the NQ and the ES off of this bottom that's occurred. Now, ideally, we need to look at this as a large pennant flag formation, which you can see I've drawn right here, and it extends out a bit, about kind of like this. And what we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is a flag formation setting up. We broke down last week fairly strongly and then recovered back into this pennant formation. This could be an early kind of a volatility bubble that's taking place or what I would call a washout low but even though my modeling system shows a number of support levels these green lines across here to here I want you to understand that in reality this is short-term support and change the color real quick this is short-term support for the NQ and we do not have any real technical confirmation of an uptrend in the end view, long-term uptrend, until we get above this level right here, which is 12,573, roughly. So we come back down to the longer-term chart, and we will take a look at this trend. We could go back even further if we wanted to pick the peak. And what we're seeing here, ladies and gentlemen, is we're seeing a consolidation in a sideways flagging formation with two highs right across here, one across roughly here. Let me spread this out. One right across here and one across here which become our downward resistance for price. And we will change this to a reddish color. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And what we need to be aware of, ladies and gentlemen, is until we get above this downward sloping channel, and above this 12, uh, 573 roughly level, we are still in a bearish trend. And that's gonna be the purpose of this Fibonacci analysis model. You can see to the downside, we have an immediate downside target of 11,300 right here at this blue level. Let me draw a line right across here. Let me move this line. Well, let me draw a line down here. And let me move this line down here. So these are our downside targets for the Fibonacci price modeling system. This one is in red. This one is in blue. And this one is in gray. Draw that in gray. And what we have here is a real potential failure. So understand that it is very critical that you understand that this resistance level becomes very, very important in the long-term scheme of things. I want you to be aware that as much as traders want this bottom to take place, Fibonacci price analysis, when we go back and we take a look at historic price analysis, you can see that we've had a number of peaks in resistance. There's a no, another Fibonacci zone right in this area across here, which becomes another critical zone for future price activity. And then there's, of course, this zone back up here that becomes another critical price level. And what these are, these are Fibonacci trigger levels that are occurring in price zones. So a lot of people will think of these like uh, 
uh, support and resistance zone or supply and demand zones. Uh, and uh, what we need to understand is that these zones exist based on Fibonacci analysis. There's another one right across this line that I'm drawing here. And then, of course, I've drawn the one down here right now. So if we were to fail right here, if we were to actually fail from this level right here where we are at current price and on Monday open to the downside or even up a little bit higher within this channel but below this resistance level, kind of like this, either we open a little bit higher or a little bit lower and then roll over, there's a very good chance we're going to see this 11,300 level on the NASDAQ hit or move downward to 10,500 or lower. Now, I want you to under, also to understand that there's a very critical cycle that is going to take place right here on July 26th. Very, very important that you understand July 26th becomes a very critical cycle for the markets. So something is going to happen on or before July 26th, right around this level here, there's a very strong potential that we're going to have some kind of a, a news event or some uh, surprise event or pricing event take place by July 26th, on or near July 26th. My opinion is we are going to see some failure at this level, stay below this level, and roll downward to about this level on or near July 26th. The same setup is happening on the ES. Let me come show you the ES, the S&P. We've got these dual flagging formations taking place. You can see right over here. Let this load. Takes a bit to load this because there's quite a bit of data being loaded, quite a bit of analysis being done. And as soon as this gets done, I'll try to resize it and show you what's going on. But you can see the similar pattern here with the flagging formation taking place. There we go. All right, shrunk it down a bit. That's fine. So there's the July 26th date highlighted. And here we have these ranging support levels right across this high that becomes our critical resistance level for the S&P. And in reality, if I were to just extend this line to the right, this becomes our downward sloping resistance channel off of the top of this, uh, of this pennant formation. So where we're at again is we have intermediate support in this area, which coordinates with this low and these Fibonacci levels right here. And let me move this down a little bit. So this is a support level which is still holding up off of this low, but see how it's aligned with this red and green line right here? These are Fibonacci trigger levels. Then we have a, a trigger level back over here which aligns with this high. It's actually just a little bit higher right in there. And then we have another zone here that comes into play, and I'll highlight this real quick. Another zone here which comes into play just above this trigger level. So what we've got to be cautious of here, ladies and gentlemen, is that the S&P could rally a bit up into this area right here without breaking into a new bullish price trend. You can see this light or green line way up here I hate to tell you but the S&P must move above this level right here in order to get into a new trend it is critical that this move into this level I'm going to try to make it thick right here if the S&P cannot move above 4,200, there will be no new bullish trends taking place. This level will readjust later with my adaptive Fibonacci system. It will likely move down off of some breakdown in price. But right now, the Fibonacci system is telling us that 
there is no chance for a bullish price trend in the S&P until we get above 4,200, and that means that every single one of these upper levels becomes resistance, okay? And that tells us that my ultimate goal, as you can see with these lower price channels, becomes very, very critical. Very likely, we're going to see some rollover in price down into this level or this level by the 26, which is marked here on this vertical line. So understand that it would take a massive rally above 4,200 for the S&P to move into bullish trending. There is no new trigger in place right now showing us that any bullish trending is in place. We have resistance up into these ranges, 4,250, 4,140, 4,065. We have Fibonacci zones at uh, just below 4,000, call it 3,990. We have another Fibonacci zone down here at 3,811 roughly, 3,810. If we were to fail and get below 3,810 right here, then look out. We are going to be moving down to the 3,400 area. That's going to be a 400-point move in the S&P before we're going to find any support. And remember, July 26th is very, very important. That is only about seven trading days, eight trading days away before we are going to run into a major catalyst event or what I would call an inflection point. So this is the Fibonacci analysis for the major markets. This is telling us that price on the S&P must get above this 4197 level, and I believe it was uh, 12. Let me take a look over here. Well, let's go back. It should hopefully be in memory. So price has got to get above. Wait for this to load real quick. It's got to get above, I believe, 12,600 on the uh, 12,600 on the Nasdaq in order to be confirmed, which is right here. So this means that we still have a long way to go for the Nasdaq. Yes, you can see the green line right here. This green line indicates that the Nasdaq has to get above 12,600 in order to initiate a new bullish trend. There you go. There's your update. So we expect more bearish trending. The longer it consolidates, if it consolidates into this range going forward, it will establish new levels as we move. The Fibonacci modeling system will, but we're really at a very critical inflection point with a major inflection point hitting on July 26th. There is no indication that we are at or near any bullish trending with any modicum of support or momentum. Therefore, we should be expecting continued downward price trending, uh, and I think we're going to see the final capitulation low come back in here. For the NASDAQ, it's going to be somewhere around 10,400, uh, 10,400, and for the S&P, it's going to be below 3,400, possibly down into the 3,000 or 2,960 range, roughly. All right, that's it for now.